as, as she was explaining that person, I thought, I want to meet that person. <laughs> I got a little teary-eyed. Um, I want to do a shout-out to Stephanie. Um, not only was she uh, so poised and eloquent, eloquent but um, what you were saying about standing up took me back to this time when I was in the same age as most of the undergrads. And I ironically went off to college thinking I was going to be a lawyer, planning to go into the courtroom. And I have to do a shout out to all of you undergrads. There was this moment when I was in my dorm and I was channel surfing. And for this brief moment, I was transfixed. There was this young boy in the center of Tiananmen Square standing in front of a tank. And I think all of us have since seen that moment. But being a young college student and watching that and watching that young boy stand so profoundly saying, I'm taking on the system because it is so much bigger than me, it's bigger than democracy and freedom, and I have to have a voice. And at that moment, being this young undergraduate college student, I realized I had never stood up for anything. I'd always kind of gone with the flow. I had always been told that I was going to be a lawyer because my father told me so, and that's why I went to college. And watching this young boy be so resolute and say, I'm going to stand up for something that is bigger than myself, made me realize at that time that I didn't want to go off and be a lawyer. I didn't want to fight those battles in a courtroom because maybe it was too late. I think I'd rather fight battles in a classroom and not just those safe suburban classrooms that I grew up in, but classrooms that have those children that need someone to stand up and give them a voice because they don't have a voice. Well, I have to tell you, I knew absolutely nothing about being a teacher. So I quickly re-enrolled in, in graduate education classes, and I found out there's a huge disconnect between theory and practice. And I learned that early on in my first education classes when I thought it was going to be this segment of, of kumbaya that I would waltz into an inner city classroom, and my students would moonwalk across the class like a Michael Jackson video and hand in their perfectly written five-paragraph essays. <laughs> At the end of every perfect book report, we would join hands, we would sing Kumbaya, and all will be right with the world, or so I thought. So to show you how truly Pollyanna and clueless I was, for the very first day in the job, I decided to wear the exact same dress that Julia Roberts wore in the film Pretty Woman. I had on polka dots, I had on pearls, I had this little coach attache case, and I was going to make this 45 minute drive from Newport Beach into the inner city. My father was very distraught. He called me from the golf course that morning and pleaded with me, no matter what, no matter what my students said, please don't eat the apples, because he'd convinced himself they were laced with strychnine or razor blades. <laughs> well, as I made that 45-minute drive from, from Newport Beach, this safe suburban city, into the inner city, everything changed. Everything changed because so shortly after that young boy stood in front of that tank in Tiananmen Square, Los Angeles was seized by a riot. The Rodney King verdict was announced. Los Angeles erupted in flames. And in the city that I chose to teach in, there was 126 murders. 126. So when those buses arrived at that school step, kids weren't jumping off and they weren't excited. They weren't wearing brand new backpacks or pocket protectors. They could care less about Shakespeare and those sonnets and Homer and that tale of an odyssey. They cared about survival. Because for most of these young kids, many of them young men, they walked through life feeling like they had a bullseye on their chest. They knew what it felt like to stand in an assembly line at a funeral parlor. For many of them, they'd been to more funerals than birthday parties. So as they walked through that metal detector and walked into my classroom, room 203, most of my students could care less about reading and writing. Most of them looked around and they hated each other. They hated this concept of, of picking up a pen and using it to be mightier than the sword. And the only thing that seemed to bring these students together was they really hated me, this perky, annoying cheerleader from hell with those polka dots and those pearls, because they were miserable. They were miserable and they wanted to make me as miserable as they were. So what I'd like to do for a brief moment is I want to take you into my classroom, into room 203, to introduce you to those faces, to those names, and those stories to understand why kids came into my class not thinking they'd have a voice, and years later to feel like they are civil rights activists, willing to stand up for any injustice, whether it's in the classroom or beyond. So I'd like to introduce you to those names and those faces. So I'm gonna ask Justin to turn the screen on and welcome to room 203. <laughs> 